Oh, Canada. Well, it's really unfortunate that um, you guys had to experience it like this, right? And what I mean by experience is become awakened and based and dare I even say radicalized it's unfortunate that the system has reared its ugly head in your direction because you are such a good people you are such an honest and truthful respectable, respected, respectful people to have this happen to you like this. And it just goes to show you guys that no matter how good of a person you are, no matter how good of a person you aspire to be or your people as a group, as a unit aspires to be, this is the end game. And as a lot of you have aptly understood and have even said now, and I'm proud of you for saying this, is this was never about COVID. This was never about 14 days or 15 days to flatten the curve two years into it. This was about control. And the big win here, if there is one, you know, the positive side of this, the, the takeaway that we can all learn experience from is that now see no matter how good of a person or how good of a people you are or how good you act and behave and how well you comply at the end they're going to shut you down and they they never want to be challenged and i have to say you know props to you guys for mobilizing in our generation the largest most viewed and funded organic grassroots campaign to ever in our generation, I believe, happen, and then resist the uh, inevitable co-opting, co-intel-proing, and subsequent discrediting that the system tries to do, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. In 2007, 8, and 9, when the American Tea Party was ramping up, you know, we had an organic Ron Paul-esque Tea Party. And this Tea Party movement was not neoconservative. It was not George Bush. It was not, you know, war in Afghanistan or Iraq. This Tea Party movement that we had spawned was pro-liberty, freedom, freedom of speech, and a shift in political cultural thought at that time although it was premature of you know these forever wars walking away from them right a populist conservative movement and conservative doesn't even mean anything but we use these terms because they're just the common terms that people understand we're not talking about conservative or neoconservative with regards to the tea party movement that we had created originally it was more libertarian, right? Well, that movement got co-opted by Sarah Palin and Glenn Beck and discredited subsequently by Sarah Palin and Glenn Beck. You know, they had come out and made buffoons of all of us and discredited us fully and fully, right? Foolishly, fully, they discredited us. And so anytime you would talk about libertarian or conservative or Tea Party, Republican memes or ideas at that time in 2007, 8, 9, and 10, it became like this discussion of Glenn Beck or Sarah Palin instead of the ideas. And so you guys in Canada have, in my estimation, successfully repelled that attempt of co-opting fairly well so good job on that and your peaceful resistance movement 
getting crushed and displaying to the world just exactly how the New World Order acts was really, you know, good. You guys did good on that. But I have to say, for all of us, not just you in Canada, it's getting close to the time when the peaceful resistance needs to stop being so peaceful. Like, United Nations is not coming to your help, right? You know, America's not going to come help the Canadian truckers, the, you know, the, uh, the American state and establishment, the military and police. On the contrary, if America sends any help, it's going to be against you, right? And I'm not saying we are against you, the American people. I would say that most American citizens now are not down with Biden are not down with Hillary, and even most liberals find their actions and their rhetoric to be rather cringe and counterproductive to what we want as a movement or what they want as a movement. Just like, as an allegory, the situation of Russia. I would think that most American decent folks, centrists, left of center people do not want to engage in a global war with Russia. But the American regime, the people who took over the election, you know, are heading in that direction. And so that's what I'm saying here, right? Like, I've been spending a lot of time watching your parliament every day. Candace's speech, the Jewish lady's speech, the guy who came to defend her speech, everyone. I've watched. Trudeau walk out of that parliament like what two or three times now right I've been watching it I've been really enjoying it to be quite honest because here in America you don't get to just like question your president like that you know a parliamentary system in some instances is kind of better than what we have here in America right but we're also kind of better in the sense that we're not unified like you guys are. We have a separation of powers that's more defined, or at least was. I don't know if it still is, with the threat fusion centers and all that, and the national security apparatus, Department of Homeland Security, and the, you know, the threat continuum of national emergency, right? And so I just wanted to say, you know, like I really support this convoy movement, and I've donated to it at the GoFundMe level and at the Give, Send, Go level, right? And I have yet to receive my refund from GoFundMe, by the way. But it wasn't much, it was like 20 bucks, so, you know, not the end of the world, you know, it's not a, it's not a super amount of money, but it's a tithe, nonetheless, right? Given twice now. But what I was gonna say is, last week I discussed this idea that I think we're gonna see the protesters roll off the police and then perhaps the United States comes to reinforce those, you know, rolled out police positions, right? Trying to manage the protests, trying to manage the line. And uh, this morning I was, you know, woke up and immediately started watching and I saw a lot of guys in like green uniforms that were rather unmarked, right? Like they didn't say police or RCMP or whatever, right? They just were rather unmarked uniforms. And I wonder if that was what I had postulated was gonna happen. If those were, you know, international reinforcements coming to the aid of the very exposed and ill-equipped riot force that Trudeau was attempting to unleash on you guys. Because didn't you guys have your police chief in Ottawa resign, like on or around or after the time of when the, Amer you know, the emergency declaration powers were enacted or whatever? You know, and just kind of, I don't know the story of that guy or whatever, or the new guy or the guy that was in between the old guy and the new guy, but, you know, 
my hunch is that perhaps the reason why that guy resigned is because he didn't want to go along with it. And I bet you a lot of other people resigned because they didn't want to go along with it. And we just didn't hear about it. And that's why they probably had to reinforce their, you know, occupation force, right? Because let's just get something straight here. I think going forward, when we discuss what happened and what is happening there, we need to reverse the idea. We need to do what Trump did with fake news. They originally tried to call Trump fake news, and so he called them fake news. And it stuck, you know? And the lexicon of ideas now, when you talk to people, and you say, so-and-so or such-and-such such is fake news, they know we're talking about CNN, right? And so what we need to say about the occupation, so-called occupation, there in Canada is that the occupation in Canada is actually the Ottawa Police Department and its reinforced um, you know, RCMP or whatever they had, their military. And that's another thing. I clearly saw what looked like military. Like, holy shit. I saw dudes in fatigues with what looked like ARs and several sets of clips for those ARs, right? Magazines. I think, I think they deployed military assets. And that's troubling. You know, like, really? Do you need not only police and mounted, you know, Canadian Mounties or whatever the fuck those are, but now you also need, like, military? Like, with ARs? Or maybe those were just, like, juiced up SWAT teams or something like that, right? I don't know. But man, you know, where do we go from here, guys? Like all of us, I'm talking about New Zealand protesters, Australian protesters. In Australia, they just, they dropped LRAD on people and got caught. And it looks like their government even admitted that they LRADed their own people, which by the way, is that not a war crime? Now, of course, again, the UN is not gonna come help or save any of us. So this talk of war crimes from the vaccine level and... The idea that they're damaging people beyond their will or no informed consent, the idea that um, they're using coercion or forced experimentation at the vaccine level. Dude, Nuremberg is not coming to save us. And that's what I'm getting at with the peaceful protest bit, right? Like, in my opinion, getting rolled by a bunch of police and horse and cops and fucking tanks and getting shot with LRAD cannons and be peacefully getting owned is not a solution. Maybe I'm radical. Maybe I'm a little too radical or extreme in my thoughts, but I just don't see that as a sustainable, viable solution. And the reason why I say that is because two videos ago, we talked about the galvanization of people and ideas. And I still think that's a thing. That the people, the, you know, the pieces are set. The, the cards have been dealt and the die has been cast. And so the people who are pro-vaccine are going to be pro-vaccine. They're not gonna never not be. The pe regardless of how many people get stomped and owned and get the shit beat out of them by police, they're not gonna change their mind. A lot of those people have set their affiliation, so to speak, right? Like they're not gonna change their mind or whatever. They're not gonna have their opinions recalibrated or adjusted just because some people get their asses beat by police. They're gonna say, see, you should have followed the rules and you're a nuisance anyway and get your goddamn vaccine. That's literally what's gonna happen. So this idea that, you know, we're gonna get our asses beat by cops and that's gonna change the hearts and minds of people. Yeah, okay, how's that going for you? Like, do you see any of those police on the fucking line changing flag right then and there because you got your ass beat? 
fuck no. The answer is no. None of those cops are gonna fucking lay down their shield, turn in their badge right there, and like join the protester. That's not gonna happen, bro. And if they did, there's a hundred cops behind him that will fucking arrest him right then and there. That'll stab his ass. Or you know what I mean? Like there's there's so many people to fill in that gap now. This is what the global government was set up to do. It was not to flatten the curve and it was not to increase economic viability globally. The global government was not was not set up to expand liberty and freedom. That's not the plan here, guys. The plan is to shut it down and to create a system that can never be challenged. Going as far back as Bilderberg, um, now into the World Economic Forum, the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations. You know what I mean? Like, they're not in the business of losing their hegemonic imposition on any of us. That's not going to happen. And so I really think the time for getting your asses beat is over. It's time for us to stand up together globally. We have exposed them for what they are. We have seen each other rise and fall in the tyranny resistance. We've seen good people get owned and arrested and that's not going to stop. And the more people we let them arrest, the more pieces we let them take off the battlefield, you know, in ideas and resistance, is the less people we have. And what am I saying here? Dude, the courts are gone. There is not going to be justice for any of these people. Look what happened on January 6th. All these boomers are going to get prison sentences. And so effectively, those pieces have been taken off the board, captured by the enemy. They are political prisoners. They are prisoners of war, is what I'm saying. And so we need to stop allowing ourselves to get arrested. We need to fight back. What does that look like? I don't know, dude, okay? I don't know what that looks like, but it needs to start looking like more than just getting arrested and disappeared and Guantanamo obeyed and gulagged and having your finances removed from you, having your bank accounts frozen, your crypto stolen by the way, holy shit. Like wasn't that the whole thing that these crypto nerds were telling us this whole time is that you can't take my cryptos away from me. You can't do this or that because it's crypto bro. Well, is that not what the Canadian government just did? Right? Like. The setting up of the IMF and the World Bank wasn't about like, so you can have FDIC security on your 401ks, etc. It was set up as a weapon financially as a tool to be used against you so that you have cons they have consolidated control over the flow of your capital so that whenever you do something wrong or bad in their eyes, they can simply turn off your accessibility to the financial system and so that you can never mount a defense. Because Think about Kyle Rittenhouse. Didn't it cost him millions of dollars to defend his, you know, whatever had happened, his self-defense case? Come on, man. If they shut off your bank accounts like they did in Canada, how are you going to pay for your defense when it comes down to you? Your dumb ass just got arrested out on the front lines with the police in Canada, right? And guess what? You don't have a bank account. So how are you going to bail yourself out? You're not. That's what I'm getting at, guys. They have a consolidated monopolistic control on the use of force, a hegemonic uh, monopoly on financial tools and instruments used that you would need to employ to defend yourselves. You're not, you're not gonna get, we're not gonna get out of this peacefully. There is no voting these people out. There is, and I would say stay the hell away from the court system. Don't do something to get arrested because you're not going to get justice, right? And as 
the leftists, you know, the Antifa, BLMers say no justice, no peace, dog. We are seeing no justice, no peace. So where are you at, cuz? Where are you at? They're not coming to help. That's not, they're not. We're on our own here, guys. We're on our own. And quite honestly, these people have stealth bombers and drones. And they're all up in our SIGIN, you know what I mean? Like analyzing our communications between each other. They're all up in our data consolidation through big tech and Facebook, etc. you know? So your ability to like mount a resistance through social media is, is not viable. Because even if you're on something like Getter or, you know, BitChute or something like that, some other software and, and program, the actual switches that exist on a physical level, on an infrastructure level, between this city and that city, or this state and that state, internationally underground, or the satellites in the air, those communication relays are consolidated controlled. And so you're not gonna be able to send a signal to each other. So we are on our own here, city by city, state by state, county by county, country by country. And so we have to sabotage their ability to use those same systems against us through info war and through infrastructure weakening, identify the hubs and the, and the hardware pieces they use and sabotage those and then go after the system as they go after us. And failure to do will quickly render us in a situation in the next one to 10 years where we will never be able to challenge them again. And that's what I'm afraid of. That's where I think we are quickly headed to right now, is we are in a situation where we can never challenge them again. And we may lose our one shot to do so right now. This COVID shit, this World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab and Davos Group has bitten off more than it can chew, but they are already in a planted position to anticipate, react to, deploy, and control our response. In fact, they have already calculated what our response is going to be. And quite honestly, they know a lot of you are pussies. And you're just going to sit there and let them fuck you in the ass. Right? They already know that. They already know a lot of you assholes are going to lay down your, your resistance and just let them arrest you. God damn, dude. Like... Is that how we win? We just all get arrested and end up in a fucking gulag? In a concentration camp, a COVID camp? Seriously? That's not sustainable. And no one's coming to help us. The United Nations is not coming to help us. The United States is not coming to help us. Donald Trump is gonna go to prison, most likely. Every single day, they are running shit on him. Donald Trump is not gonna take over. There's not gonna be a red wave in 2022 midterm elections. There's just not. The globalists are in trouble and they're going to push the button. The I win button. The, oh wow, we're in a global thermal nuclear war and if you oppose us, you're with Russia and so you're going to go to Guantanamo Bay. That's where we're at. And I need you to realize that. I need you to recognize that. Because right now, it's not looking good for us. Being a nice person against an evil empire is not a strategy for winning. We have to take countermeasures. We have to deploy countermeasures. When we go to protests like this, we need to disable their ability to communicate and organize. That way they are as flat-footed as we are. Because what they're doing is using satellites, they're using radio, they're using cell phones, they're communicating with information and red light cameras at every intersection and they're saying okay we got a group over here and a group over there they got dudes inside our movements who are informing 
on where we're at and what we're doing. Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keeper is a great example of that, right? And some would even argue with the Patriot, I mean, uh, sorry, what a Freudian slip there, with, with the Proud Boys we had informants in there, right? So, you know, from a human perspective, we are fully infiltrated all the way to the top here. And so the only way to win this is to have superior tactics than they do. And that requires disabling their advantage of electronic infrastructure over us on the streets. Here's a good, for instance, whenever we saw Proud Boys versus Antifa in the protests in the summer of 2020, or was it 2021? I think it was 2020. We saw Antifa rolling around getting their asses beat because they were outmatched physically by the Proud Boys. Well, guess what? The next week, Antifa rolled up with shields and armor and helmets and, you know, bear mace and all these less than lethal things like paintball guns and rubber bullets. They evolved their tactics and their strategy rapidly. Now, I don't, I don't think that was organic. I think they were coached, quite honestly. And so that's what I'm telling you guys. If you want to force multiply, if you want to expand your ability to project your force in theater on the straight and on the ground, you need to get organized. And you need to come prepared to the battlefield with gear. You need to have football pads on at the very least, shin guards. You need to have helmets on. You need to be ready to do melee combat. You need to be ready to defend yourself, hold the line, open a position in the enemy lines and charge into it, break up, cut their line in half, cut off their reinforcements, flank the enemy, cut off their supply lines, disable their communications and overpower them. And then do not give them quarter. Do not give them courts because their courts are stacked against us with their secret indictments, with their liberal judges and their kept grand juries. You're not going to get justice. And so we cannot give them justice until this is over. And you're going to say, wow, you sound very extreme. Yes, yes, we are there. It's either that or you just let them arrest you. I mean, you tell me. You either die in a gulag or you die on the street fighting for this right now. Because right now, humanity either fights and wins and then we go after China afterwards or we go quietly into the night, into the gulag forever. That's it. And what do I mean by that? Is their system will never be challenged. Humanity will be enslaved globally for over a thousand years, bro. We have reached that point. And what happens after that? What am I talking about? Dog, I'm talking about the matrix. I'm talking about pod people. I'm talking about idiocracy. I'm talking about robots taking over. I'm talking about Terminator. I'm talking about Judgment Day. And I'm talking about Skynet and AI. That's what I'm talking about. And we either get a grip, grow up, and stand up and be ready for this, or we get fucking owned. And that's all I got for this one, guys. Very sobering words, very radical words, and so be it. Because right now, we are out of options and we are out of time. They are about to launch a goddamn global thermal nuclear war. And if what some of my people are saying that Klaus owns Putin just as much as Klaus owns Trudeau, just as much as Klaus owns Biden, then this goddamn war on the horizon is either a smokescreen or a fake war. And either way, they're going to profit on our dead bodies. From a military industrial complex standpoint and contractors like Lockheed, Boeing, we, we're out of time here, guys. We are out of time. This is it. We're done. This is it, guys. We're done. We either, we either fight now and win this or we lose forever. So, you tell me, is getting arrested the idea? I don't think so. I think it's a dumbass idea getting arrested. 
you're not going to get justice, you're not going to get access to the financial system, you're going to be labeled a terrorist, a domestic terrorist, an insurrectionist. Um, I would say stay the hell away from the front lines of the enemy until we get organized enough to mount an offensive. But we need to draw them out using disinformation like they do on us, SIG and Ellen and Humant, and get them to think and that we're going to launch an offensive in certain areas when we don't. Because that's what's going on. That's what I see Russia doing. Let's just assume for a minute that the Russia deal is organic and not a Klaus Schwab WEF distraction. Let's just assume that Russian's actually a free actor for a moment here. If that's the case, then it looks like Putin has trolled the Biden and the CIA administrations here because they think that Russia is going to actually attack and they keep saying every day, every day, any day now, any day now, any day now. Russia's going to do this, Russia's going to do that, false flag, any day now, crisis actors, any day now. And it's not happening. Russia hasn't done it. And so it just further discredits the military industrial complex war machine and their entire apparatus and their credibility, right? Their entire legitimacy has been taken from them by Putin. And so when we engage the globalist, we need to do exactly like that. We need to project misinformation and formations to throw them off their game. Because look how long it's taken Biden to get his military to the other side of the planet. Right? It's taken two weeks at least for them to get to the other side of the planet. With all their C-17 and C-130 and C-5 galaxies lifting constantly daily jets back and forth and by the way with all that movement to everything into the european theater who's going to protect our western flank from like china or korea right you see what i'm saying like these these people are setting us up for a situation where china will roll the planet they'll just roll the whole planet russia will push east and or west and china will push east globally and meet in the middle, which will probably be Europe or Israel or Middle East, right? That's what I'm saying here, man. We're out of time. And this whole idea of let's just peacefully protest and get arrested and say we love you, bro, is not effective. And we will lose if you guys continue in those same boomer strategy tactics. We're gonna get owned. We are getting owned. You have been owned. The military industrial complex on a global level has already demonstrated in Australia that they will deploy LRAD sound weapon, you know, direct energy weapons on its own citizens. It's just days between when they do that to us here in America or up there in Canada. And I wouldn't doubt if they're already doing that in Canada. So just a thought, guys. The time for playing games is over. We need to grow up and get ready for an actual confrontation and have the courage to do so. Because by not, by allowing them to arrest you, you're just taking yourself off the board. And I get it if you're a coward. You know, you'd rather, rather live on your knees in a prison cell than actually die on your feet. I get it, that's cool, I'm not mad at you, you know. Most of you will. But we're in a 22nd century here, 23rd century sophisticated war, and they have drone, spy, stealth, hellfire, GPS guided capability. They don't even need fucking pilots to do this, right? They don't even need soldiers for this shit. And that's where I'm at, man. It's like, we're out of time. So that's all I got, guys. Y'all take it easy. I'm going to catch you on the next video probably tomorrow, right? For real this time. All right, guys, y'all take it easy. See you next time.